Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make the perfect custard recipe from scratch because you do not need a box mix. It's actually a really easy recipe to make and you can serve it warm, drizzled over some cake or a fruit crisp of any kind, or you can chill it and serve it in a glass with berries or layer it in a trifle. Custard is just one of those basic dessert recipes that you should know how to make, so let's dive right in. If you've made creme brulee before, which is one of my favorite desserts, you pretty much know how to make a custard because creme brulee is just a custard with a crackly caramelized sugar topping. And so if you think about it that way, what we're making today is that underneath part that has a really thick, creamy, and luscious texture. And the way that texture becomes so rich and thick is thanks to egg yolks. So go ahead and crack five large eggs and separate the yolks from the whites. You can put the whites into a storage container and store those in the fridge when you're done, because for this recipe, you just need the egg yolks. And if you're looking for ideas on what to do with those leftover egg whites, I personally whipped up an egg white omelet the day after filming this, but you could also make the maple meringue cookies from my cookbook if you're looking for another sweet recipe. To make the custard, add one cup of heavy cream and one cup of whole milk to a saucepan over medium heat. Whisk it occasionally until it just starts to simmer with bubbles along the edges, then remove it from the heat. And while this may take a couple of minutes, I always warn people to not turn their backs to milk simmering on the stove because it can easily boil over in a split second and make a big ol' mess. So do keep an eye on it. Now to your bowl of egg yolks, add two tablespoons of honey, two teaspoons of arrowroot powder, tapioca flour, or cornstarch, any of those will work and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Whisk that all together and then very slowly pour half of the hot cream mixture into the bowl while you're whisking. If you pour too fast or don't whisk at the same time, the eggs will curdle and you'll end up with scrambled eggs rather than custard. So do remember to pour slowly and whisk simultaneously. Once that's done, you can place the saucepan back on the stove over medium low heat and slowly pour the tempered egg mixture back into the saucepan. And my whisking skills are less than stellar in this clip, as I realized it's definitely easier for me to whisk with my right hand than my left. I was just afraid I was going to block the camera if I poured from my left hand, but I'm sure you guys will be just fine. So after that's all poured back together, stir it for another one to three minutes or until the custard is slightly thickened. If you wanna serve it thinner and more drizzly, you can pull it off after a minute or so. And if you want it thicker and more pudding-like, it'll probably need that whole three minutes. What you see here on video is about three minutes of simmering, so it's definitely on the thicker end in terms of a warm custard drizzle, but I did that so that I could show it to you both ways. And for demonstrative purposes, I went ahead and whipped up my flourless chocolate cake recipe, because why not? Though heads up that I do have an apple crisp recipe coming your way and this custard would also be amazing drizzled on that. Both of these dessert recipes can be found on my website downshiftology.com and one thing I love about this flourless chocolate cake is that it's really airy and spongy, not thick and dense. This is always a reader favorite recipe during the holidays and in my opinion, it's the perfect complement to a silky custard recipe. And seriously, who wouldn't love this chocolate and vanilla combo? We'll come back to my taste bite here in a second, but first, let me show you how to chill the custard if you opt for that method. Pour it into a glass bowl or storage container and then cover it with plastic wrap so that it's touching the surface. This will help prevent any skin from forming on the custard. Then chill it for at least four hours, though overnight is best, and remember that it will thicken up a bit more once it's chilled. When you're ready to serve it, remove the plastic wrap, give it a stir, and then place a few large spoonfuls into small glasses or dessert cups and top with fresh berries and chopped nuts. As you can see, it looks very similar to a vanilla pudding recipe. And in case you're wondering, the main difference is puddings just use more starch to thicken them up, while custards rely more on the egg yolks, which is also why they taste a bit richer. Now, the good news for me today is that I have two desserts that I get to taste test, though in all honesty, I did polish off two slices of the flourless chocolate cake once the camera stopped filming. It's funny because as a kid, my dad always preferred the warm custard, and I think being a Kiwi and having the British influence, that was what my dad preferred because he grew up with that. My mom, on the other hand, as an American, preferred the chilled custard that was far similar to an American pudding. Now, I don't discriminate. I will gladly eat custard. 
either way. The warm vanilla custard over a chocolate cake is seriously the perfect pair. Mmm. And the flourless chocolate cake is so light. If you guys haven't made that recipe, I highly recommend it. It's not fudgy dense like a lot of flourless chocolate cakes. The folding in of the whipped egg whites just really lightens the chocolate cake. And so even though the custard is dense and velvety and luscious, ugh, the combination, it's pretty amazing. Now the chilled custard, uh, well, let's take a bite first. Mm. So this is more similar to a creme brulee, which is also another custard, far more than a typical American pudding that's just really thick and sugary. This definitely has more of the eggy custard flavor to it, um, and it's still just so smooth and delicious. In terms of storage, if you make the chilled version, that will last for about three to four days in the fridge. The warm version is obviously best straight away, so if it's the holidays and you're making cake or my apple crisp, putting the warm custard on top is divine, and with the amount of portions in the batch that you just made, you'll use it up all right away. I hope you guys enjoyed today's new custard recipe. I am not sad about finishing these off here in a second, um, but I would love to hear from you if you are one that prefers it warm or if you prefer it chilled, so let me know in the comments below. And with that, I will see you guys again in the next video.